Hello, performance ninjas, and welcome to the lab assignment about false sharing. This is the first lab assignment that covers performance issues that frequently occur in multi threaded applications. The whole point of multi threaded execution is that you try to utilize all computational resources available on your platform by running multiple execution threads in parallel. What performance issues might happen in such a scenario? Well, most frequently those come from inefficient communication between worker threads. But before talking about that, I should mention that there is a certain class of application that does not require communication between the worker threads, right? And we usually call such applications massively parallel applications, right? So in those applications, you can achieve almost perfect scaling, meaning that your performance of your application will be faster and faster uh, the more CPU threads you assign to a task. But usually applications have more sophisticated logic to synchronize between different worker threads. Right? And so we use logs to do that, and which themselves can become a source of performance problem. And okay, performance tools can help you with finding those expensive logs where threads uh, waste time waiting for those logs, right? But that's a topic for another video. Maybe I will show it next time. And since Performance Ninja mostly focuses on low-level performance, today we will take a look at hardware related performance issue that is specific to a multi-threaded applications and which is called false sharing. Let's take a look at what happens when two threads write to the same memory location. Well, first they pull in the same cache line from memory. Then they update the same location with different values being X and X prime and then they try to write this cache line back to the memory. Uh, oops, looks like we have a problem here, right? Well, w which value should be stored back to the memory? And moreover, if both threads think that they have exclusive access to this cache line, they will proceed with having different values for the same variable in the program, right? And then, so coherency is completely lost here. And that's why all multi-core processors have some form of cache coherency protocol, which is designed to solve that specific type of problem. One of the most well-known and relatively easy to understand cache coherency protocols is called MESI, which stands for Modified, Exclusive, Shared and Invalid. The first letters of four states in this MESI protocol. And this MESI protocol ensures that any updates to cache entries are also reflected in caches owned by other threads. I will not dig into all the details of this MESI protocol. You will find more information if you will just simply Google MESI cache coherency protocol. Now let's go back to our scenario here. With the cache coherency protocol in place, CPU cores communicate between each other and sharing updates through a super fast bus called CPU interconnect. Okay, so with this upgrade, we don't have correctness problems anymore. However, every modification to a shared line becomes much more expensive, right? Because now cores need to ensure that they can modify the cache line and that no other thread has done it behind our back, right? So, because if someone modify the same cache line that we want to modify, we now need to back out our changes, pull the new data in and try to modify it again. The scenario when two threads update the same memory location is called true sharing, which is a performance bottleneck which should be relatively easy to find in most cases. And there is one more interesting issue that is kind of a similar nature as true sharing, but it is somewhat different. So these same performance problems can happen when two threads 
update different variables that belong to the same cache line, right? And this is called false sharing. And even though those two writes modify completely independent memory locations, they cannot happen simultaneously, right? And they are effectively serialized, which kind of tanks all the benefits of running multiple threads. And so what usually developers do in this case to tackle this kind of problem, they try to change the memory location of variables X and Y so that they sit in a different cache lines. And this is exactly what you will have to do in this lab assignment. So it's now a good time to take a look at the source code. So we have this for loop, which is executed by a multiple threads. Each of them update their own accumulator. And all of those accumulators, they belong to the same STD vector. And so we know that they reside in memory sequentially right uh, after each other. And that's the problem. That's where the false sharing actually happens. It because, well, okay, each thread updates their own accumulator, but they all happen to belong to the same cache line. As usual, let's run the baseline and collect the top-down analysis. All right, so here is our baseline. And now let's actually run the, the top-down. And, and you see, this time I'm using minus minus drill-down option. It's just to show you how, how it can automatically um, collect the required metrics for all the levels of top-down. And so uh, the script will actually run your application multiple times. At every run, it will drill down to a deeper level. And then, uh, so, okay, so top-down attributes uh, the bottleneck to the local latency, which I'm not sure actually entirely useful in, in our scenario. But what I wanted to show you today is actually a new tool called perf C2C or perf cache to cache, which is designed for finding specifically those type of problems. And so let's run it. So you see, you run it exactly the same as you run the simple perf uh, sampling, right? So instead you just add this uh, C2C uh, command. And so, and in order to view the output, you just say perf C2C report, and let's take a look at the output. By the way, there is a great blog post by the authors of this tool that covers uh, the usage of, of perf C2C, and I will share the link in the comment section under this video. And okay, there is a lot of complicated stuff on the screen, and especially if you are not familiar with the terminology here. But what's important here is that, okay, we have 13,000 of loads. And then what we need to take a look at is this metric called load local hidden. And so it counts uh, the number of times we were trying to load a cache line which was also modified in the cache of another CPU core. Well, that's actually 60% of all the loads. And okay, now let's scroll down a little bit. And another interesting piece of information here is this table, which actually shows what were the cache lines where those contested accesses happened, right? And in our case, it's just a single cache line. Well, it's actually according to our expectations, right? Since we know that all the accumulators reside on the same cache line, right? And then what's interesting left in this output is actually this Pareto table, which kind of gives us the breakdown for each individual cache line. And okay, so we have the offsets into that cache line, uh, which triggered those uh, hidden events, right? We have the address of assembly instruction, which, which again uh, initiated those loads. And then what we have here is actually interesting. It's the number of cycles those loads took. And you can already see that those numbers are much, much bigger than what you would typically see for an L3 cache miss, for example. Right? And then in the end, we also have this uh, name of the function. Well, it's a OpenMP outlined uh, routine, right? We have the name of the executable and we have the source line where 
this event happened. Okay, th this was a brief introduction into this perf cash-to-cash uh, -to -cash tool. I'm sure there is a lot more uh, we can talk about this, but uh, you can you can play with the tool on your own and and, and see all those metrics and uh, and also I encourage you again to read the, this blog post. But now let's actually go back to the source code. Next, I will show the solution for this lab assignment. However, if you still want to work on it before knowing the answer, it's now a good time to pause the video, go to the code of the lab assignment and try to improve it yourself. Having said that, here is how you can solve this lab assignment. Okay, so our goal is actually to make it so that the, every accumulator will reside in its own cache line, right? And we can achieve that using a line as keyword. Uh, and I defined a special macro just for convenience. But the thing here is that the, every new app object of accumulator will occupy its entire cache line. And so we essentially um, achieve the goal of having uh, those accumulators to not occupy the single cache line. And let's see how it reflects uh, on performance uh, of our benchmark. And again, I use uh, check speedup.py uh, from the Performance Ninja repository. We reduce the running time by 90%, which is almost eight times speed up. All right, now that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I see you in the next lab assignment. Take care.